we're going to move uh, straight on to our next panel now, which, I mean, in terrifying news, I am hosting. Um, we're going to talk about identity, guilt, and feeding um, as they all tie into one another. Uh, please, could you welcome to the stage TV presenters Kate Quilton and Cherry Healy. All right, welcome. Um, oh, by the way, I don't know if you were here for it, but we've been told off by YouTube already for swearing because we're live streaming. So if you feel like swearing, just say the word swear. Yeah, I never, I never, swear, I never swear. People who know me, I never swear. <laughs> no. It's going to be easy. Squeaky easy. clean. Um, they are Very weird. Observant. I was thinking they must have a moderator who's just working on this live streaming all day. And I hope they're learning something. Um, I imagine they are. So, um, first this of all... a baby. It'll be a baby somewhere. <laughs> <in> the <laughs> they're all very young over at YouTube. Absolutely, yeah. I love it. So, both of you have made, um, have made documentaries about feeding. So, I thought, first of all, maybe tell, tell us about your experience of feeding your child or children. Um, did, it, did you have a plan? Did it go to plan? You Let's start with Cherry. As mine's the oldest, so I mean, you know, age before beauty. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, tell us who you are and what your situation is, etc. Do it like a little, whatever. Like a little bio. Yeah. Um, I'm, Cherry, yeah, I'm Cherry Healy. I'm a TV presenter and a documentary maker. I've got two children, Coco and Bear. We're like a circus. Um, <laughs> Cherry, Coco and Bear. Um, come into town. Um, Coco's nine. Bear is five. They are so lovely. Obviously, they're my children. They're going to be. Um, but it's hard. It's really intense. Um, and nothing can really prepare, for, prepare you for it. You know, you, you get pregnant and then someone hands you a baby and it's like going, here's a full-time job on your full-time job. Make that work. <laughs> also, look hot. A full-time job. <laughs> Don't forget to go to the gym and be in bed by 10 because you need your beauty sleep. <laughs> also, the gas bill. Don't forget to pay the gas bill. And the milk is off. <laughs> also, don't forget to run through corn, like fields of corn, like fields misty, of misty fields of wheat, looking beautiful. Anyway, so um, it's quite an intense experience, as I'm sure you all know. Um, anyway, so I make, I used to make documentaries about women's lives, a lot of those. Um, but Cherry has a baby, gave birth on camera. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> and people always go, That's... Do, you, do you regret that now? No, not at all. People go, oh my God, that must have been such a private experience. I was like, yeah, there were 10 people in the room. One of them put their hand up my vagina without asking. I've had more private moments. Okay, oh birth, birth to me, not a private moment. Director, was that director on the vagina? Sadly not, no. <laughs> I'd have been like, at least I know your name. Um, Just a so, runner. No, no, I mean, there's, for me, there's lots more private things that I do that I don't want anyone to see. Like, no, don't want to be, you know, don't come to the bathroom with me, thank you very much. But um, having a baby, I had no shame about. It's the most natural, beautiful process. And it used to be a, a kind of a village thing, you know, not a village thing. <laughs> <laughs> on the list of events at the village hall. Um, but to me, it's a very... Uh, it's not something I mind people seeing. But I can understand why people do completely. Anyway, so I made a programme um, about giving birth and also one about breastfeeding. I found breastfeeding incredibly difficult. Like, oh, my God! I mean, I know YouTube don't want us to swear, but <laughs> if you'd seen me then, you know, four in the morning, you haven't slept, my boobs were as big as watermelon, so painful. I knew breastfeeding was supposed to be difficult, so I didn't even really complain. So when the midwife was like, how are you getting on? I was like, fine. I mean, I'm not dead. <laughs> like, my, my face hasn't come off, but that's good. That's a plus. What I didn't say was my breasts are so sore to touch that I cry every time she wakes up because I know I've got to breastfeed. And she wasn't really getting enough. I was just a mess. I was so... And I remember one morning waking up and looking at my husband and going, I actually think I'm, I think I'm in trouble. I think I, I'd been shaking all night. I was shivering. I, was, I knew that... You know when you know that there's ill and then there's, I'm actually in trouble. I'm actually trying to be as dramatic as I possibly can with my tone. Um, <laughs> so I went into hospital and they went, you are so unwell. So they admitted me for five days. I was infected for every part of me. I, had an, I was just all over... Because I hadn't said, this is a bit uncomfortable. Anyway, so they flushed me out. They flushed me five days. Couldn't see Coco. 
Five Yoni, days. five days. Just had Coco. Wildly in love with her. Wildly in love with her. My brother, because oh. my husband didn't like, my brother would drive to the um, hospital and sit in the car park with her so I could have 10 minutes with her in the car, which you can imagine was just a cry fest. Anyway, but I got better. I got well. But then I was just too scared to breastfeed again. They tried to make me, which I felt very cross about. Um, but then a lovely midwife, because no one had told me about expressing. And I went, what's that then? And they went expressing. And I was like, literally the answer to my prayers, showed me how to do it. And I was like, so she can get all of my milk and I don't have to go through this situation again. It was magical. It was so great. And I also mixed bottle. And we were suddenly, it was like the lights were turned on at home. It was honestly, it went from this awful, awful thing to this wonderful thing. I was like, oh, okay. All right, Coco started to grow. She started to put on weight. I looked like I wasn't going to kill myself. It was great. It was so much better. And then with Bear, when he came along, I immediately mixed fed. And because I did that, um, I breastfed him for ages because I never got in a pickle. If ever I felt like I was engorged, I was express. I basically had the knowledge. What I realized was you have to have the knowledge. And then when I went back to work, I expressed Lowe's, which has its own special nightmare attached to it. Um, and you know, you're, you're breastfeeding in, in the toilets and somebody's done a great big poo and <laughs> smells like farts. And, um, and there's wee all over the floor. It's wonderful, magical time, <laughs> magical time. And again, I know that's something that's come, gonna come up a lot today is um, what the, the provisions for women who are breastfeeding and how the UK is so far behind in, um, you know, we, we want women to breastfeed and yet we're not providing a space for them, yet don't get your boobs out in, in public. Oh, is, should I become invisible? Because if you, I'd love that, that'd be great, but I'm not sure that's actually scientifically possible yet. Mm -hmm. It's boggling, It's a it? bit boggling. It's yeah. like jump, but don't get off your seat. Well, eh? <laughs> so anyway, that's my breastfeeding story. Excellent, Kate. Okay. Ah, so uh, my boobs are still fully in action because I, I have a little babe, bless him, he is just eight months old. Um, and oh yeah, should I give a little biog, whatever? Yeah. 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 Uh, I've worked in telly for years, done lots of different jobs, um, but uh, started off kind of in front of camera, then very much went behind and now... Uh, present again and make a whole bunch of shows. <laughs> I always make pretty much all the shows that Cherry makes the BBC, I make on Channel She 4. makes them, but they're trendy. <laughs> Come on, it's not fair. I'm trying. <laughs> We're almost I like... Watch you, I'm like, I wish I'd done that. <laughs> Call up the director and like, look, is this the first time you've met? It's yes, it's oh, really amazing. <laughs> I feel like I want to talk to her for a thousand years because I'm like, oh my God, we do the same thing. <laughs> we do, we basically live the same life. And I've been called Cherry twice today. That's so funny. My boyfriend always watches it goes, she's kind of a bit like, you know, we grew up in the same place. We grew up in Bury St Edmunds. Crazy, crazy. Anyway. Um, uh, but I'm very much at a different point in terms of like motherhood journey. And so, yeah, um, my little babe, he's eight months old. He's right now with his dad, I think, just walking around the block. And it's, it's bloody hard. I mean, last night, for instance, I got three hours live. That word YouTube is in Harry Potter, so it's not actually a swear word. <laughs> Boom. So. Is that allowed? I'd say yes. It is, it is, it is. Keep streaming, YouTube, keep streaming. We'll rein it in, we'll rein it in. We're good girls. Okay, okay, right. Sorry, guys, sorry. I said vagina a lot, to be <laughs> that, fair. That they really hate that one. Word. The that is, hate that one. I won't use that word. <laughs> but that happened. Oh, so, um, <laughs> right, moving on from vagina. Last night, as a case in point... <laughs> Uh, me and my vagina <laughs> got, um, got three hours of lie down oh, sleep oh. in two one and a half hour intervals and that I mean so this morning it was funny I got up and I was full of beans at about six o'clock this morning with my baby and my husband I went downstairs and he's like darling I think you're on the brink of turning into a complete asshole. please go back to bed <laughs> <laughs> a biological term and if we're talking about giving birth yeah, then I think is. you know what I'm saying she said anus hole oh yeah. it's a medical term sorry sorry oh babe I'm not sure anus hole is better it's a medical term and um, it's in Harry Potter so it's fine um, Snape says it Snape says it um, book two oh so my husband did swear at me this morning and I said yes you are right I take that 
Thank you. I'm going to take these two hours and go back to sleep because I've got to come and talk at this thing and I probably could do with a bit of sleep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that is, that is the stage that we're at right now. Um, my little babe is up a lot. Um, I'm working. I'm probably completely crackers for doing this, but because um, I, unlike Cherry actually, one of the small differences between the two that's of literally, us. That's it, this is it. I was not expecting breastfeeding to be hard, okay? So yeah. I went into it. My sisters, I'm the youngest of four. My sisters have all breastfed, totally fine. My mum breastfed, fine. My amazing grandmother, who had eight children, breastfed three children at the same time. Because <gasps> she had... Listen to the noise. There's no oxygen left in the room. Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah. And she'd already had five kids, and then... In month eight of pregnancy, with what she thought was number six, was actually six and seven. And she oh had twins. God. And then she had n number eight very shortly after. So she had three babies that were relying on her, and, and she did it totally fine. So I was like, okay, I can cope with one. Absolutely fine. Anyway, when we got to it, my baby didn't eat for the first 24 hours, really. And I was on the phone to my mum, and I was like, oh, don't worry, none of you really ate when you came out. And then it was 36 hours, and... The hospital had kind of just let me leave. I don't think they were meant to do that. Um, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we had a really, really, we had a rough start. Um, and uh, I, just a few weeks before I had a baby, I went into Channel 4 and spoke to the boss, a brilliant man, Ian Katz. And I said, look, Ian, we've got the worst breastfeeding rates on the planet. At age one, they are the lowest which I was totally shocked by because I think, you know, America, you've got mums going to work after a month, you know, going back to work. Um, surely we can't, you know, have worse breastfeeding rates in America, but we do. Um, and so I went to see him just to say, look, I just think we've got to normalise it. And in all these other programmes that I make, when I'm talking to a farmer about cucumbers and my baby's on set, because that was always the plan, that I'd return to work a bit, one or two days a week, and my baby and my husband or my mum would come with me, um, husband slash mum. And um, anyway, I said, look, when I'm talking about cucumbers, can't I just have my baby latched on and just be breastfeeding? We've got to normalise it. You never see it on the telly, you never see it in yeah. movies, you never see it in, you never see pictures anywhere of it, apart from on Instagram now, which is brilliant. But um, anyway, so that's kind of what we talked about. And he said, look, you know, we should actually make a whole documentary about this, which was brilliant. And so... That therefore meant that I did go to work very early. Uh, I, was, I was back at work filming five weeks after my baby came along and it was mental and I look back and I think, oh my God, it was absolutely crackers. I wouldn't have done it for any other programme or documentary or film, but it was just really important that we got this message out there and, and luckily it's still doing the do and it's been shown at Parliament and hopefully some legislation is going to change and there's going to be some finance plugged back into breastfeeding support because for me and my journey... I live in Tower Hamlets, which is the best place to live in the country when it comes to breastfeeding support, bizarrely. Uh, pretty much every, um, every other place in the country had their funding cut in 2015, and Tower Hamlets have retained theirs. Um, and so I had an absolute angel of a breastfeeding support worker come to my flat three times in the first week. Wow, wow. She was amazing. She was calling me up. She was a dear... Irish dot of a lady saying, darling, I think it tonight, treat yourself to a glass of wine. I was like, oh, I can drink wine, but I'm breastfeeding. She's like, you need a glass of wine. <laughs> and, um, I mean, how amazing. Someone from the NHS saying, drink a glass of wine, you're breastfeeding. So, yeah, so now I have an occasional tipple. But, it, yeah, it saved me, and it saved me and my babe when we got to the point of, yeah, breastfeeding was established, and now we're still doing it, and he loves it so much, we stay up all night doing it. <laughs> And that is, um, uh, I wanted to, I mean, you've both touched on it already, but when it comes to then how, you've, how you end up feeding once you're out of that initial complete chaos, and it is chaos, and it is so, I think it's really excellent that one of you, one of you were like, this is going to be really hard, and the other was like, oh no, I was very naive. Um, but I, yeah, I, I remember it sometimes taking two hours to get my son to latch on, and my partner would know that it had worked because I'd go, <laughs> Like oh. that. Um, <laughs> but then they were like, it's fine, it's good, it's good, it's a relief. I remember one time struggling so much and someone had bought me this tome, this breastfeeding Bible, and I thought, well, I'll have a look in there. And, um, and I, it just said, rest them on your front and they'll just wriggle up and latch on by themselves. And I ripped it in half. Um, <laughs> no offence, let your league. 
Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but you've both touched on making however you've chosen to feed or however you've ended up feeding were, uh, work with going back to work. And I suppose, in a sense, we've all had that experience of being self-employed. There's pressures that come with that. There's extra pressures. There's more extended hours expected of you to generalise when you're in, in, in employment. employment. Um, talk to me about your experience of um, making that work, working whilst with a baby, full stop, but it's with, especially with an angle on feeding. I was saying upstairs earlier, I was like, one of the things that really struck me early on in pregnancy was that at work, you have to pretend, and this is not new, we've all seen an Instagram meme about this. Um, <laughs> at work, you have to pretend that you don't have a child, and when you're at home, you have to pretend that you don't have a job, which is basically splitting you in two, and is so obviously gonna cause a huge amount of upset and tension and difficulty with being a woman. I mean, it's just, it is not achievable. You cannot be constantly feeling guilty in, yeah. and expect to be happy. And actually, it's very difficult to find balance. And I always say that balance is like a tiny bird that sits in my hand, and I think everything feels balanced, and you know it's going to fly off at any moment. <laughs> but it's just, uh, don't breathe, don't sneeze, don't even look at it, because it's going... But, you know, there are moments where you think, I'm at home, and... But the children change, schools change. So just when you think you've got it nailed, it changes. And to go back to breastfeeding, I, I went back to work pretty early as well. But again, it was one, a couple of days a week. And it felt really exciting to go back to work. And I took um, Coco with me and then, and then Bear. And um, I took well, RO Pair or I took uh, my mum with me. And it was really nice and it felt really lovely. And I know that that's, that's a real privilege of the job, is that it's flexible and... It's amazing that you can take your baby with you and still, and still carry on. But I found breastfeeding nigh on impossible in that situation because, you know, if you're filming in a field, well, you've got the car, but then it's freezing cold, but then you put the heating on, but by that time they need you back because you get a certain amount of... And there's only so much you can really ask of the crew. I felt so, I felt so guilty for putting that extra that extra um, burden on them. I felt so bad. Sorry, that was very close. Um, I felt so bad about putting that extra burden on them. Um, but then I felt deeply guilty about not being able... I mean, it just go, I'm just going to feel... A cycle of guilt. going to feel like I'm letting everyone down for the next 25 years. Um, so I think the facilities are a massive thing. That is a massive thing, because actually, if there had been nearby cafes where I had been confident that there would be breastfeeding rooms available, then we could, have, we could have planned it, we could have organised that, we could have made that as part of the schedule. But that, in those, in those days, you know, five years ago, the breastfeeding conversation was only just starting. Like, it, was, it was only then that for women were first starting to go, no, hang on a minute, you want me to breastfeed, but there's no one, nowhere for me to breastfeed. Or you're <laughs> saying it's not okay to just do it in a cafe. You but know, it's not, it's, but, yeah. it's, 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 it feels like a, 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 a several pronged movement is required, yes. isn't it? There's lots it's and lots of things. Getting they, rid of this idea that it's a private thing, but yes. giving us the option of having it as a private thing. Yes, absolutely. But you know, it's perception. I yeah. mean, I would have, I'd love to see you do one of your shows. Like, that. I mean, that would yeah. bring the house down, don't you think? That would absolutely bring the house. No one, no presenter has ever done that. I mean, that is a brave thing to do. I, 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 I couldn't but want doing, anything more. But doing feeding on camera at all... Is it possible? Is it paved the way for either you or whoever the next person is who's then doing the, the, the show that's nothing to do with breastfeeding, yes. but breastfeeds yeah. during it? Yes, that, that's what I mean. I mean, it's not always something you want to do whilst you're at work, but I think it would say something incredibly powerful. So when, we, when I made this documentary about breastfeeding, it was a dispatches which we're battling to get back onto all four right now. You will find it online soon again. Um, uh, my intention was, right, we're going to shoot this. It was a five-day shoot. I was going to do one day a week. Easy. Husband will be there. Be fine. Um, but I never thought, I never envisaged actually kind of interviewing and my baby breastfeeding. But at five weeks, bless him, I mean, he was still, he was, he was feeding for like probably 14 hours a day or something oh. crazy. And so really, as it happened, day one, I'm like, okay, let's get rolling. And then my little baby was like, oh, I want some milk right now. So it was just like the, the only way to really do it was for me to pretty much shoot the lot with him latched on, which I didn't so think did, that I, was not I the plan. Seen it, so, and I will, of course, watch it. So did you, you actually, in the documentary, you are breastfeeding while you're doing... Interviewing, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Um, but, you know, when 
when you're in the groove, you're like, actually, actually, at that early stage as well, I felt better, I felt calmer yeah. and more focused on, you know, interviewing Sue Ashmore from UNICEF or whoever it was. Brilliant. I felt calmer and more and more centred if he Why? was actually on because my bosom. Because you were always thinking I should get back and I need to be somewhere else. Well, he was always in the same room with his dad. He was so quiet, a little bug Aww. at that time that, you know, you just sit with his dad in a hug and, and kind of just watch. But, you know, you feel that stretching of the umbilical cord, even if, you know, they're at the back of the room mm. or even if they're yeah. kind of in the cupboard yeah. around the corner at that early stage. Always kind of trying to get home or... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just, like, very happy just to basically shoot the lot with him here. Um, since going back, returning to the other programmes I make, which aren't about breastfeeding, we haven't yet shot a scene when he's been feeding, but... I think we should. I mean, it's important. Come on, I'm going to have a baby just so I can do it on factories. <laughs> <laughs> Tip for tap, my friend. Oh my God, we could have a boob off. <laughs> oh my God, we could. BBC versus Channel Four. I hope that like uh, like Netflix or Dave are listening. They'll be like, we found a way of combining this. I think your um, winter boobs are definitely we, winning. We, right could, now, we could do. We could do a who can breastfeed in the most extreme situation. <laughs> Okay, now it's more kind of Channel 5. <laughs> Fine. Sorry, um, very competitive. I, I, I took it. I took it somewhere. <laughs> um, so we touched on guilt. So um, I, let's talk a bit more about guilt and identity. Um, and and, and I, I, you put it in such a lovely way there, Cherry, in terms of like you have to be at home, you have to be someone who's not at work, and at work you have to be someone yeah. who's not at home. Um, but also I wonder whether... Um, I want to talk about, you know, have you got any guilt? Have you had any guilt? And ultimately, I want to know what ideas have you got in terms of solutions to that that don't necessarily just involve lots and lots of very expensive therapy. And I also want to, I want us to come at it as well, perhaps moving away from feeding a bit more now and more into the kind of working parent thing in that sense that I remember, um, I remember taking some work um, very, very early on the same, and having a friend say to me, very well-meaning, say to me, well, you're doing it for him, you know, everything you're doing, no, I'm doing not. for him. No, exactly, and I thought, no, it's for me. <laughs> it's absolutely for me, because yeah. I'm very lucky, because I love my work. Yeah. So this is definitely for me. Yeah, um, I think it's I'm really good to acknowledge that. I'm definitely making his life harder yeah. for the next 12 hours that I'm going to be away. Uh, I will be fine. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> but a ton of guilt, absolute yeah, yeah. ton of guilt, and mm. and and that and that feeling of um, I don't know if you've had this that feeling of almost obsessively thinking about them in the very yeah. early months when you're not with yeah. them because it's chemical actually that, in a way. Yeah, absolutely. And it's good to know that. But in terms of it, how do we? Uh, what have your experiences yeah. been? Uh, uh, and what can we do to make life easier for parents going forward, especially mothers going forward? Because I have a very strong medical background. I don't. <laughs> um, I come from the same school of thought as Kate's midwife, and uh, wine helps a lot. Yeah. What? All times. So I have got all of the guilt, as I'm sure you do, <laughs> about everything. I don't go to the gym enough. I don't see my mum enough. I don't call my friend Ellie enough. I <laughs> don't see my boyfriend enough. I don't see my kids enough. I'm not in part of the PTA. I don't even know what the school looks like. I do. Of course I do. But um, my kids go to World Book Day with, like, a banana on their head. <laughs> like, if they're freaking lucky. Yeah. And if I can find the blue tack. Um, so it's very, it's very guilt-ridden at all times. I didn't go to bed early enough, I went to bed too early, I didn't do my tax return. Anyway, yeah. blah, blah. That sounds to me like a very funny example, though, of just some managed expectations, perhaps. <laughs> yes. Is that... Well, in do you know what, honestly, really, like, what? you know, I can't say... You're not going to go it. you won't look like, where's Wally? Yes. You will have a banana on your head. You will have a banana. And I but think that's why this, this, um, this community here saves me every day. Yeah. Because you've got this gummy mummy who's going... Screw, screw, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, it's something screw you do with a, the it's PTA a, it's a work for the moment. Term. Like, just get, get actually to, to, take your, to take your expectations and throw them in the bin and just and smile and be happy that, you know, just don't do too much. I think this community has saved me. When I became a mum, I thought I was going to have to wear Laura Ashley and, like, curl my hair and get rid of my tattoos and definitely not wear a biker jacket because that's a bit... Yeah. Um, and then I um, encountered mothers' meetings, which I'm sure some of you have been aware of, and I met some amazing mums, and I was like, oh, my God, these mums are so great, and they're so funny, and they swear, and they drink wine, and some, they, some of them, like, have tattoos, and they still are a great mum, and I realised that what, what you look like is no reflection of how good a mum you are. And also, if you work, 
Sometimes it makes you a better mum. I know that when I go to work, my kids get the best of me. And actually, if I've had a long stint of them at home, I find it incredibly exhausting and difficult. I mean, I, I agree. When I, when I went back to work, it wasn't really... I, I, of course, I had to earn money. Uh, but it was really, it was for me and my sanity. And I love working. And that's, it's lovely to hear people like Eugenie being so honest about that. You know, the, the head of cities for Uber. Just wanted to put that in such a cool title. Um, you know, it's really, really empowering to hear somebody claim it and own it and not, not make any excuses or disclaimers. Actually, I love working. It's good for my mentality. Men are allowed to work. Men don't even have to make an excuse for it. They can just go to work. And we have every right. We have the same brain. We have the same ability. If you want to go to work, go for it. Um, of course, this is money being a thing. But actually, the, hearing those women talk... It has given me so much permission to enjoy work and go to work. And that has got rid of a lot of guilt, actually. Yeah. And also, that, that new phrase of, like, happy mum, happy baby. Oh, my God, are women important too? Are women yeah. important in this, in this equation? Well, yes, because if you are run ragged and you feel depressed and you feel lonely and you don't have any money and you kind of don't like the setup, do you think you're going to be giving your kids the best of you? So no one wins if you're not having a nice time, really. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Guilt. I still, I, I think, I still feel slightly like I'm in the trenches with getting used to this being a mum thing. Um, it's amazing. I just still feel like I'm learning, and I probably feel the guilt, but I'm still learning what that is a bit, you know, because <laughs> at the moment, it's, I'm kind of still at the point where I'm like, if we're all clean, if we're all <laughs> yeah. fed then we have won. This yeah. is a great day. You know, and then you start to kind of pull in weaning and then the teeth come and then tooth brushing gets <laughs> into the schedule and then it's like... I mean, sounds, not, like, sounds, sounds like little things. Um, They'll get a new lot anyway in a yeah. few years. <laughs> That's what I think sometimes. I mean, that is true. That is true, isn't it? Just scrape it off. <laughs> in a constant state of flux. Oh, actually. my God, absolutely. And I don't know how it is... So I probably get I feelings of guilt around... So, you know, I work a couple of days a week and my husband pretty much always comes with me. My mum steps in if he's not around. We're both freelance, but without a doubt, he's been the one that's kind of turned down work more because yeah. we made the decision, OK, let's oh, get kids. you back to work. <laughs> oh, um, because my brilliant husband, he is, he, he's an actor and a writer. He is now in his 40s, and he's like, darling, I've been acting professionally since I was 10. I can have a break. And he wants to have a break. He's like, there's actually nothing I'd be rather doing right now than changing this little bub's nappy. Oh. Um, so it's incredible that I have that support and we share it, but it's still, I think as well, you're getting into a groove of, oh my God, we're doing something that is a completely different shape. Yeah. Our families on both sides pretty much probably think it's a bit weird and it's a bit like, hold on, the man should be at work. Um, and yeah, we're encountering that a lot. So I guess I probably feel these strange feelings sometimes around, oh, I want to give him his time and his space to go and do his work a bit. And yeah, it's just basically the guilt can just seep in around in every aspect of it. And every relationship. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, totally. And do then you I feel guilt, Jessica. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get do I? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I've got guilt. I. And then I think once you've once you've come to terms with, okay. And and, and I think we sort of the identity bit is kind of covered in the guilt bit because you're you're like well you know part of getting over the guilt I think is you going but one of the things I identify as is what I do for a job. That's become yeah. a huge part of what I am. And, and and your identity is in a constant state of flux. Whatever you're doing with your life anyway. You know, you might be someone who was all about what they did for work, but then has to start caring for a parent yeah. or a sibling. You know, you d so you, it's. Do you think perhaps it, the guilt relaxes when you become a bit more fluid about what it is your identity yeah. is, and you're not trying to shoebox yourself into an expectation that you had? Yeah. I don't know. Or if you're just happy to be in a constant state of flux. What, where I think another layer of guilt comes in is once you've accepted, okay, I'm not going to have guilt about my work as well as my parenting. Then holidays. Because you need them too. And I definitely come back from them without him. The ones I go on without him, I've had one so far, five days, best, oh, best so thing good. I ever did. Definitely came really? back from that about so a month. Definitely, really? yeah. yeah. It was three, but the guilt I had to do, and I'm very 
I'm so privileged I've got a shrink. I got to sit down with a shrink and work for months through, yeah. making sure I felt like I deserved this holiday. Yeah. I just lied still for five days and read yeah. books. Whew, sorry for bragging. Oh, my oh, God. Um, so and I came night back... Sleep. Yeah, four nights I, sleep? 12 hours a night. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I've had, I've had three. Three hours has oh. been the greatest stretch in eight oh. months. Um, so I'm um, got to say we're running out of time, but what I want to do is at least uh, at least answer one question, if not maybe two, if we're quick with our answers. But um, yes, the person with the orange jumper up here was first, I think, if there's anyone with a microphone. Shout, shout like through. you've never shouted before. Oh, microphone's coming, microphone's coming. <laughs> oh, oh, don't shout, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't swear. <laughs> yeah. Arsehole's fine. Oh! <laughs> she said it first. <laughs> it's not on. It's not on. Oh, you will have to shout. Oh. I will have to shout. Oh, hello. 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 Um, thank you so much. And I think a lot of what you said has really resonated um, to me, especially because I'm about to go back to work. I have about a uh, six and a half month old. Um, I work for a major internet company. Um, starts with an F, ends with an UK. And uh, <laughs> Flug <they're>... book? <laughs> Flig book. No, They're sorry. an extremely diverse, very family-focused company. I feel very privileged to work there uh, with a lot of senior female leaders. Um, however, the people that I feel like get ahead are workaholics. And yeah. I feel like when I, and I'm very career driven and I feel this guilt of going back into work, yeah. wanting to throw my hat into some of the big conversations, getting ahead, but I do have the guilt of wanting to still be with my son and declining a lot of those meetings, declining yeah. staying late to have a conference call with California or something. So do you have any advice to how you can still get ahead in your career, but still balance that? I absolutely had that. I'm very, very motivated and I'm a single mom, so money's really important to me. And I'm just important to me because I like nice things. Um, so, and I like Nando's a lot. Um, so I feel um, very excited by work. I'm very competitive. Um, and I like to go out and, you know, hustle and make the do the deal and da da da. Um, but I also want to be really present for my kids. So I decided that I was just going to um, try and keep it balanced. And that means, that means saying no to work that goes to other people. And that's very hard to say, but they are often smash it and do a much better job than I do. But that's been very difficult, but especially when, when the world says that you need to be doing the best and there's, you need to be successful. And I get, sometimes get a bit jealous of other people's success success, success because I think, well, I, I've, I've promised myself I would try only do three days a week, which is hard when you're paying all the bills and also when you see other people doing amazing things. And you know, it's people who are doing amazing campaigns and they get all this amazing... And I just think, just... And I try and just stay in my bell jar. And I remember my priorities and I remember what I go look this is this is the rush hour of our lives and my kids are not going to be young forever there's going to be a time I can put my roller skates on and I can go hell for leather and I can give it all I've got but right now in the evenings I've got laundry to do there's only so much work I can do I used to be um I used to I was doing this project that I absolutely loved it wasn't paid it was a it was a project about sex after kids I was absolutely passionate about it but I realized I just didn't have enough time for it and it was it was making me feel manic. And I thought, the kids deserve more than this, actually. So I think, create your, create your priorities and then try and ignore the workaholics because they've got their own battle to fight. They've got their own journey. Yours is right now. You will not have a small baby forever. And it's amazing you've got this amazing, cool job. And so just, just eat little bits of each pie knowing that you can have a lot more later. That's what I say to myself, that a lot of people are doing much better than me and getting a lot more work than me. But I know right now that when I'm older, I will look back on this and I will not regret the decision that I've made because it's right for me and my particular home situation. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, it, it, it just very exactly quickly, that. it is that cliche yeah. of, you know, you never, you'll never, ever, ever, ever hear anyone on their deathbed saying, I wish I spent more time at the office, ever. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, and I think there's, there's a difference between being very ambitious and seeing yourself as a superhero that's capable of doing more than is possible to be done in the hours that there are in a day. And also I think there's, 
there's a real empowerment in really owning a no. Just being yeah. here today, I've, I've, I've had it in my head. This, it's been just chipping that I've agreed to something on the 4th of February at 4 p.m. that actually I don't want to do because I've had three days and nights away from my kid and I want to pick him up from nursery that yeah. night and I'm in the lunch break uh, later going yes. to email and say, we need to reschedule. Yes! Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but it's work I don't want to lose. It's something I really love doing. I don't care. Yeah. I also I'll, think what it's just each... Thing, can I do it? Can I do it? Do I need to be there? You know, if you need to be there and you really want to be there, do it. If you don't, don't. And I therein s- lies the change of identity, I yeah. think, because, I mean, it looks like every woman here and us three probably have always said yes. Yeah. Even when, to our detriment, we've said yes, 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 I'll do everything, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And now it changes yeah. and you just have to be comfortable and, yeah, absolutely own it. And that is part of your identity now and it's, yeah. it's changing. I think and you're not, you can't so be so important. much of a people pleaser. You can't do everything. Yeah. You're not writing a contract that will set you up for the rest of your life. And I have to remember that sometimes. You go, actually, I want to do three days a week now, but Coco and Bear are kind of five and nine and they don't need me quite as much. And Coco's got, so, she's, that's her social life. Is lit. <laughs> lit. And now she wants to do netball and flute. I'm like, I'm barely going to see you, babe. Have you got any space for me? So it changes. <laughs> I'm realising now that actually that time does come back. So I wish I, could, I wish I could go back and tell Cherry that with two, you know, the two. I go, actually, it changes constantly. And that's very freeing. You go, okay, well, just it's, this is what it looks like now. And it'll probably be different in six months. Yeah. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. So sorry. Please, can we have a massive round of applause for these fabulous guests?